Oh. My. God. Right, yo, then, lads. I did film a intro for this video, but I think I'd rather let you watch this video instead. Roll the video. Arsenal, they can't even get in. They can't afford it. So we're in the we're in the ring for Pepe, and it was banter. Fucking hell. For fucking hell. Oh, what a day to be alive. Let's get into this video. Yo, what is on, guys? My name is Bob Sweetino. Welcome back to my channel. You see this ugly mug of mine? This is very gassed. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is right. The depression season is over. Normal waking up, checking your phone, and seeing bad news. Normal shitty rumours linking us to Scottish cross merchants that play at the beach. And most importantly, no more Europa League football. Oh, actually, it's a bit too early for that. But yeah, that is right, the dons of Arsenal, Raul and Edu. They've done it. They've bloody done it. They have somehow secured the services of world-class winger, or I should say potentially world-class winger, in-demand winger. Nicholas Pepe. Sorry, just give me a minute. Um, this is a bit too much for me to handle right now. What the fuck? Nonetheless, now I've got a bit of my excitement, just a bit of it, out of the way. Um, I think it's time to get to the video. In today's video, we're not making a boring old welcome to Arsenal video because that, everyone's going to make that. I'm not doing that. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about reasons why Arsenal are signing Nicholas Pepe for £72 million. But we had a £45 million budget. So without further ado, here are five reasons why Arsenal have signed. Nicola Pepe. Five, bringing back the pace. Now the word pace alone just sends a shiver down my spine and that's mainly because of Arsenal's defence. So whenever an Arsenal defender comes up against pace, yeah, we're fucked. The amount of times we see an average player who has nothing else but pace kill us again and again and again. It's just a joke. And the funniest thing is like Arsenal fans like me used to laugh at Theo Walker. We've actually missed Theo Walker and his pace. Don't get me wrong, we've got the Gabonese Prince up front, but when you've just got one man with pace in your whole team, realistically, it's just so predictable. In terms of pace out wide, Arsenal have lacked that actual winger with pace for a long, long while. Even if you are to go back to the days of Dog Shagger, Dog Shagger wasn't extremely fast. And if I go back to our last rapid winger, it was Theo Walker. But we all know with Theo Walker, he has all the pace and um, zero ability. We all learned that, didn't we? and still somehow managed to score 100 goals. How? So in terms of our attack, what's happened recently is because we've only got one player with pace, everyone knows it's the mark, it's Pierre and Aubameyang, because the rest of the players, they play football walking pace. So what it does to our attack, it makes it pretty predictable and it's pretty easy to play against. I've said it time and time again, Arsenal need pace in their attack because pace brings fear and Arsenal haven't had that pace out wide for a long, long time. Now Arsenal don't have any pace and it's just not good for us. Hang on a minute though. Now we've got Nicolas Pepe. Nicolas Pepe is exactly what we needed. A pacey winger that can dribble with the ball. And most importantly with pace, Pepe's gonna bring back fear into our team. There's no longer one dimension for Arsenal, where it's just Aubameyang or it's nothing else. You've now got two runners in behind, Aubameyang and Nicolas Pepe. And you've got players like Reece Nelson coming back in the team, Bakayo Saka. There's players that were pace now and raw pace. So what Nicolas Pepe has, he's got a rapid pace about him. He's got a speed about him to run in behind or take on a man and beat a man. And that is what I love to see. So what exactly is Pepe's pace gonna bring to Arsenal? Actually, just hold that thought right there. Because before I get into that, I want you to go down there and smash a like on the video if you are enjoying so far. And if you guys about Nicolas Pepe, smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Obviously, I'm on the road to 5,000 subscribers and we're getting this little bit surely. Much appreciated as always. Comment below your thoughts on Nicolas Pepe. Uh, need I say anymore? You know I'm gassed. How gassed are you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And with that being said, as I was saying, what does Nicolas Pepe's pace bring to Arsenal? It brings Arsenal fear again. When teams going to come against Arsenal and they see an attack of Pepe and Aubameyang with Lacazette there as well, boy, you're fucking shitting yourself. Because what you've got there is you've got an elite goal scorer who makes space for himself in the box. He's rapid as fucking Aubameyang. And then you've got Nicolas Pepe who's got fantastic full ball ability. He's got fantastic pace and dribbling. You're just like, you're stressed. You're living good out here. Pace for away games on the counter-attack. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's going to be orgasmic. That's what I'm going to say. But talking about away games, away games bring Arsenal a lot of pressure. And a lot of pressure for my heart as well. I can't handle it sometimes. So on the topic of pressure, four. 
pressing ability. Now, Arsenal fans, right now, I want to cast your minds back to that opening game against Man City last year. We all saw it, and we all saw Petr Cech nearly score a long goal by passing the ball into his own net. Was I surprised? No, because it's Arsenal. But at the same time, we saw Arsenal. There's a system there straight away. There was a press there, and there was playing out of the back. There was two key things that we could see from Unai Emery's team, and that is what he wanted to implement, as you can see clearly. So since that's happened, he obviously has brought in players like Bert Leno at the back, and he's brought in some defenders that can pass the ball out. So defensively, passing out of the back, we've slightly improved. So that aspect's been improved there. But when it comes to pressing ability, towards the end of last season, that press that we had mid-season just decided to just piss off it just went it just disappeared so in terms of our current wingers i mean we don't really have any proper wingers but in terms of you know it will be the Victorian. actual press is there there's a lack of them but need no need to worry because nicolas pepe is exactly that he's a presser and he's a very good presser pepe is a player when it comes to applying pressure going forward he's fantastic at it. when it comes to tracking back he's probably not the best at it but we're not signing nicolas pepe to be right back we're signing with a right winger so his job is to press and he's a very good presser it's really been drilled into that modern mold of a winger now that you have to press you have to work hard going forwards a bit like liverpool's attack Salary and money, they hurry you so much with Firmino as well. Overall, though, what it does is it scares defenders again because you're scared to pass out of the back because you know you've got Pepe, you've got Bamiang, you've got Lacazette, it's pressing on you, you've got Ceballos there as well. Listen, man, I don't care what our defense looks like next season, we're gonna be good to watch. That's all I'm gonna say. Now, going on to the next point, as an Arsenal fan, I always have a fear mainly because we have Mustafi still at our club and if he does go, hallelujah, but if he doesn't go, the fear remains there. There's also a fear when it comes to Arsenal transfers. What if it doesn't work out? So on that topic, what type of player is Nicola Pepe? Free or on baller? Now, number five, I did mention that Nicolas Pepe had a lot of pace. And that is a key aspect of Nicolas Pepe. I'm not going to lie about that. But there is more to Pepe's game than just having pace. Let's start off with the fact that Nicolas Pepe is a ball carrier. Last season, he completed 55% of his dribbles in Liga. It's not an impressive number that is elite compared to everyone else. But it is higher than the likes of Salah and Mane. So... I think that's a decent stat. There's so many players out there that have pace and can dribble, uh, yeah, Dharma Troy, right? But they don't have end product. But need no need to worry because Nicolas Pepe also has end product. What does a man not have? Last season, he's been clearly pointing out he scored 22 league goals in Liga, taking his side from 17th to 2nd. Levels. And there's also a common myth put out by a lot of uh, rival haters, let's just say, that Nicolas Pepe is a one season wonder. He also scored 13 league goals the season before that. For a side that finished 17th, but a one season wonder, I guess. Finally, he's not just about goals. 11 assists last year in Liga, and he had four assists the year before that. Proving that as a winger, his all round game is fantastic. He scores goals, he gets assists, he carries the ball, he's got pace, and he's got Arsenal fans and orgasms all over the world. Let's not lie. Talking about orgasmic things, let's mention our front three. Two, formidable attack. Indeed, we now will have a formidable attack. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah. We have waited such a long time. We had the likes of Giroud, fucking lamppost, bloody shitty lamppost. I ain't ever gonna forgive you again for the Europa League final, you shitty lamppost. We had the likes of Theo Walker, who actually was pretty decent. We actually kind of hated him. We had the likes of the Javinios and the Shamax and the Bentners. We had players like Joel Campbell, who actually was pretty decent as well. But overall, we've suffered a lot. We deserve this, let's just say. But regardless of the players we've had up front, we've always scored goals. Whether it was Giroud, the lamppost, whether it was Van Persie, whether it was Sanchez or whatever, we always score goals. But there seems to be a theme in Arsenal. Where we have a reliable goal scorer, a world-class goal scorer, there seems to be no good wingers there. I, we had Van Persie and we had him with ball cuts and just dead wingers. Then we let go of Van Persie and we bought Alexis. We have a winger now, but we then got a lamppost up front and we got Snowgo as well. What's going on? And then the moment we let go of Alexis Sanchez, we have two world-class strikers now. Lacazette and Aubameyang and guess what we've got no wingers again we've got Wobi and Mkhitaryan and I prefer not to speak so overall when we have strikers we lack width when we have width we lack a striker but guess what that's all changed now because what else we've done now is we've got the two world-class strikers there and we've got a world-class winger or potentially world-class winger we're living life right now at its peak this doesn't get any better surely now in terms of the front three now obviously on paper it looks like we're gonna have Aubameyang on the left Lacazette in the middle and Pepe on the right because Pepe is a right winger I mean that alone just gives me um, funny flutters, you know, if you watch Love Island, you know what I mean. That front three there is very, very good. I'm not saying it's on level of fucking Messi, Neymar and Suarez, but it's a very, very good front three there. You've got an actual, proper, elite goal scorer in Aubameyang with the goal of wherever he goes. Don't forget that. You've got Lacazette, the profile is pretty similar to Roberto Firmino, who gets goals, gets assists, gets tackles, dribbles, all that stuff. So he's a very, very good striker. And then you've got Pepe now, a goal scoring winger that assists as well. Our front three is looking mad. And again, what that does is it brings fear. Fear is a massive part of this video. I want to see Arsenal have that fear again. I want to see teams come against Arsenal, look at Pepe in the tunnel, look at Banning in the tunnel, and go, we're going to get fucked today. Also, just to round up on this point, 
how Colossal set up. Obviously, the main part of me wants to go and see a front three of Pepe, Aubameyang, and Lacazette, and that makes perfect sense to me. But then again, if you play a front three, how do you fit in Mesut Ozil there? Do you fit Mesut Ozil in there? You've also got players like Reese Nelson, Bakayo Saka. In particular, Reese Nelson is going to want to play first team football now. One thing I could see also doing is playing a 4 2 3 1. You've got Ozil as a 10, you've got Aubameyang left, you've got Pepe right, you've got Lacazette up front. Oh my god, we're going to rip these apart next season. Things are going to be mad for Arsenal next season. In terms of going forwards, we all know we all score goals, but this front three. It just gives me fucking hope. Which conveniently leads us on to our next point. One and finally, for the fans. Um, may I just start off by saying, oh boy, oh boy, do we need this. Why do we need this? I think mainly it gives us hope. When it comes to signings, you see new signings, you see big name signings. You see a player we're signing there. This is the first time, I think, ever in a long time since I've been in Austin, actually. We've signed a player that everyone else is interested in. You've got Bayern that were interested in Pepe. You had Napoli were in there again. You had United were in there. Liverpool were in there. It's, like, it's not been a situation where we've been lucky enough to get him via such a situation. Like, like I said, when he was going to Atletico Madrid, instead he came to Arsenal because of the transfer van. It's a player here who big teams and elite teams are after. He's a player in his prime or entering his prime. He's 24 years old, having turned 24 this year. He is one of the most in-demand wingers in the world, scoring 22 goals last year. And Arsenal Football Club have secured his services. The fans are fucking living life right now. Now, if you're a Man United fan or a Chelsea fan or a Tottenham fan or any other team fan, and you're laughing at Arsenal fans right now, going, "Oh my God, look how over the top they are right now." The thing is, we we've been craving up for this. We've been craving up for our team to go out there and spend. We're Arsenal Football Club. We are the biggest club in London, and I'm not going to say we're the best team in London, but we're the biggest club. But one thing's for sure, we have the most fans in London. And in terms of going global as well, you go to America, for example. We were out selling Real Madrid fans. We were outselling Bayern Munich. These are two elite teams that our football club are outselling. Our fans are all over the place and we are a massive club. All us fans wanted to see is a club show commitment and they show that they're ambitious and they're signing one of the most in-demand players in the world. And I couldn't ask for much more. What well, you could ask for a centre back. Centre back Arsenal, please. Yes. I also now feel that Arsenal have got the team to order of Edu, of Raul, of Vinay, of Hasfami. There's a team there for transfers, and you can see since Edu's come in, the transfers have just processed and completed themselves. And we even somehow signed Nicolas Pepe. I just still can't believe it. I am sorry. Also, the feel good factor. By signing a player of this magnitude, the feel good factor is truly back. Arsenal fans a few weeks ago were protesting at the Emirates. We want Cronky out, all that stuff, and all oh, Arsenal fans feeling impressed. Well, we've signed no players, season's coming up, we need to sign players, sign players, sign players, and bank. You get Ceballos, you get Saliba, you get Pepe. We could also now be getting Tierney, potentially, and maybe even a centre back. Wow, look how quick football can change. But overall, just to round up, I'm gonna just talk about the rival fans that were laughing at us because we had a £45 million budget. Now, if that is true, and Arsenal do have a £45 million budget, well then, who's laughing now? We on a 45 million budget have signed one of the most in-demand young centre-backs in the world, signed one of the most in-demand wingers in the world, that is potentially world-class. We've signed Ceballos from Real Madrid, who's the alone, but we still signed him now. And we've also got Gabriel Martinelli, who's going to turn out to be the next Neymar. Who's laughing now, eh? But obviously, it is all banter at the end of the day, and to any rival fans that I have heard, I would like to take this opportunity to apologise to absolutely fucking nobody. Arsenal Football Club does whatever the fuck it wants. 45 million pounds, I was signing Nicholas Blood Club Pepe. You man are stressed. Connor, please don't strike this video. Well, that is if you're watching. Why would Connor McGregor be watching this video? I don't know. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to end the video very and there. If you have enjoyed me being happy for once and are excited for Nicholas Pepe, drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new on the road to 5,000 subscribers. So much appreciate As always, comment below your thoughts on Nicholas Pepe. Need I say more? We've signed him, Arsenal. Welcome to Arsenal, because Pepe. Now, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Hashtag Team 14 for a shout out my next video saying that. Shout out to, shout out to, and shout out to. Make sure to follow my social medias. Links will be in the description as always. Much appreciated as always as well. And with that being said, welcome to Arsenal Football Club. Nicholas Pepe. Uh, personally, as you can see, I cannot believe it. Um, but a lot of fans want to say that Pepe is the next Jovino. Fun fact about Jovino. The last time Arsenal signed a player from Lille, it was Ivorian. We signed him in the summer of 2011. That same season was started off at Newcastle away. Will Nicolas Pepe turn out to be the next Jovino? Only time would tell. But until then, oh my god, oh my god, what just happened? Oh my god!